Today we will discuss about double entry system. To understand the need of double entry system, first of all I want to discuss the background. Let's take an example of real life. Some human beings or the personal having a habit of writing their Right. Keeping the records of their uh, expenditures and the income. Like we used to write on daily basis that how much we have spent on what and what were the sources from which we have received any amount. So this can be possible if the number of transactions are less in number. But here we are talking about a business concern which are comparatively larger in size. So for that matter, writing in a simple notebook about or recording the uh, transaction in a simple notebook just like that, it's not uh, feasible for the business concern because at the end of the year by these uh, this type of recording, they will uh, the business will not be able to analyze its profit or loss of the company. So because the number of transactions are much larger in number so for that purpose the company or the business concern need a platform or a system or a particular uniform system under which they can record their transactions so the double entry system provides that platform for recording of the transactions so as we know that as we know that every transaction has a dual effect, in that case one account has to be debited and the other account has to be credited. So this debiting and crediting of the account is called as double entry system. So for recording the transactions on the double entry system, we should know the types of accounts first. So there are broadly two types of accounts, personal and impersonal account. So the personal account belongs to a natural person, artificial person or the representative. So the natural person is an human being like myself and you people. An artificial person is a company which is an artificial person in the eyes of law. Now the second type of account is real account. Here I want to mention that impersonal account is again subdivided into two parts. That is real account and nominal account. So the real account belongs to the assets of the company. Assets can be of two types, tangible assets and intangible. Tangible assets are like land, building, furniture, fixture, and intangible assets are patent, copyright, trademark, etc. And nominal account belongs to the expenditure and losses of the company and the income or gain of the company. Now rules for debit and credit under these three accounts. First of all the real account. Real account says that debit what comes in and credit what goes out. As we have already discussed that real accounts belongs to the property of the business. So if the property or the asset is coming inside the business, coming inside in the sense when we are purchasing that particular asset, it will be debited. And if in case we are selling those, it will be credited. Not only in case of selling, if we are paying, the cash is also an asset. So if we are paying, then cash is going out, then we will crediting, credit the cash. Now personal account says that debit the receiver and credit the giver. So the person who receives something, he, he or she has to be debited. And the person who used to give something, he or she has to be credited. Now the third one nominal account. It says that debit all expenses and losses and credit all income and gain. So where will we record this, these transactions? We will record these transactions in journal. 
तो वॉट इज जर्नल जर्नल इज द बुक ऑफ ओरिजिनल रिकॉर्ड इन विच अ बिजनेस मैन एंटर्स ऑल हिज डेली ट्रांजेक्शन इट शोज विच अकाउंट इज डेबिटेड एंड विच वन इज क्रेडिटेड सो लाइक दीज देर आर मेनी अदर डेफिनेशन ऑल्सो so basically journal is the primary book of account when the business person used to records its transactions for the very first time now this is the pro forma or the format for the journal first of all we have to write down the heading journal entries in the books of the name of the company then the first column is for date we have to write the date here that on which date that particular transaction takes place then another column is called the ledger folio lf ledger folio folio means page number so here we will write the page number of ledger there are two column of for amount first one is debit when we will debit the account we will write the amount here another one is credit when we will credit the account we will write the amount here 